joining us out. Um, how is everyone? <laughs> Rhetorical question. Um, big crowd tonight, and wow. Um, but warning, obesity does lead to higher rates of red fatty. <laughs> Um, a bit of a shout out tonight, one of my mates, um, housemate Mickey's in town, and um, he's come after work and said there might be a couple of um, heckles, that's okay. Um, I'm ready, much as your mum said last night. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, it's okay, you can, you can trust your willing. That came out wrong. <laughs> I meant to say, how's your erectile dysfunction going? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I use the Swedish pump. It's great. Um, <laughs> let's make a connection there. Um, but my manager sat me down the other day and they did a focus group. Like, how do people respond to you? And he, he sat me down and said, Will, people think you're arrogant and sensitive and dismissive. And I go, well, fine. That's what happens when you do a focus group with a bunch of whiny millennial, self-entitled, <laughs> drug fuck nieces at my sister's wedding. <laughs> um, but no, no, actually the manager sat me down and said, well, no, it's an issue. You've, you've got to relate, you've got to be more personable, you've got to share. Like, have you got anything vulnerable you can come out with? So we're going to try that. Um, <laughs> so I'm 42, which means I've taken to using talcum powder. <laughs> and stairs, people. And young people may not know, but once you hit 40, your body doesn't actually replace your skin cells as often, and most 40 year olds have got, you know, flaky uh, crotch right. <laughs> Just me? Just me? Wow, so supportive. And also, with the talcum powder, they actually look like four week old rotting coconut balls. <laughs> He's sharing things great. I'm gonna love this. But you know, the slightly reassuring thing is they don't taste like rotting confectionery. They don't. But what do they taste like? I hear you like, what do just chicken? But is that chicken had athlete's foot excrement being stuck downstairs next to my rotting ball sack all day. It tastes like chicken. But let's get a second opinion, shall we? Shall we? Like, do they taste like chicken? Mickey, Mickey, at the back. Can you remember primary school? You know they did that experiment with the taste um, quadrants of the tongue? You've got sweet, sour, all that. Yeah, yeah, Mickey, when I glid my scope down the tongue, which side activated the taste buds? Can't remember. Well, in all defence, Mickey, there were a lot of ball sacks going through the lips, and that's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't remember either. <laughs> but it's a little extreme tonight, Peter. <laughs> she gets worse. <laughs> I know it's coming, it's ugly. Um, but you know, and then you've also got the thing of, uh, Mickey doesn't remember, how are we gonna verify what my balls taste like? <laughs> you just, well the answer people lies in, in science. It's actually Newtonian's third law of motion and the properties of elasticity of the skin. Yes, my, my disproportionately large balls have dropped <laughs> significantly, such that they're now hovering beneath my knee. I actually strapped on tonight, so it's all good. <laughs> but you know, there, there are ups and downs. There are pros and cons. Like the cons, I'm, I'm borrowing my mate's car, which is this sweet, like WRX, you know, the real cool low ones, and wearing shorts, getting in, and like Tarzan swing, hitting the, the mud flap. That's not good, people, that's not good. But getting back to the taste, because I know that's what you're interested in. So, the taste, like, how does he know it tastes like chicken? Well, the advantage of having balls that descend beneath your knees is that when you're wearing fisherman pants and you're a little bit bored and you can't find your peanut M&Ms, it's just a grab and lick. <laughs> like protein and it's organic. Don't knock it till you lick it. Um, but there's been a lot of ball, we've been focusing on the ball and if there's one thing I've learned from Nikki, it's never neglect the ball. This is part of sensual lovemaking, people. Um, but you know, it's it's it, it's it's difficult. I'm swallowing. I'm struggling there. 
a second. But, but I realize I've been going four and a half minutes and I've made 12 ball references. And that's one every 25 seconds, people. I mean, I'm just slapping out one every 25. And I tell you, not even Mickey could do that in high school. That's a masturbatory joke. And let's just celebrate it for a moment. Let's just, just soak it in and take it in. And ironically, that's what Mickey's mum said last night. <laughs> Beautiful. But you know, that, um, that's a little bit rough, but ironically, those were the instructions. No, no, no. We're here for popular culture, and eventually we'll get there. And I was, I was reading, eventually. Um, but I was reading that Marvel are promising to make 27 superhero films in the next seven years. That's a lot of men of, in tights in my lounge room. It's not even Christmas. But, but no, no, no. But they're going to run out of stories. Like, there's only so many, like, bullshit civil wars you can have. So, what I'm thinking, and hey, it makes sense, people, it makes sense. They're going to start pilfering other films for plots because they've just got no, nothing else to do with it. So what are we going to see this summer, people? And it got me thinking. So you've got, I would love to see this summer the odd couple remade, but with the Hulk and Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Please bear with me. This is, but you know, they, they, they have a little bit of niggle and they have very different hygiene standards. And so can you imagine like the comedy of the year Everyone's quoting it when Dr. Strange says, Oh, Hulk, were you out drinking last night? There's a giant, ginormous green grog bog in there and my, you know, sparkling, you know, circular fire spell. Can't get rid of that pile of shit. It's very quotable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then maybe, well, it's really, you know, more of the tender film. You've got, does everyone remember, is it, um, is it the Wolverine? Um, and maybe Star Lord, the, is that the galaxy of the planet person? <laughs> Tell you, did not do research, people. But you know, so they've got this tender story of exploring male sexuality, animal husbandry, and uh, mustering techniques, and it will be broke back Star Mountain. I don't know. Or a final one, which is a little bit more hard hitting, and it's revisiting the classics, people. Got to revisit the classics. So, mate, you remember Doctor Strange and the Avengers? He did this 10 billion future probabilities reality thing and, and got all exhausted. Well, he does that. That's the start of the film. And he wakes up in an insane asylum tied to a bed being anally raped in a remake of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's This. A little bit darker, people. A little bit darker. So, I just wanted to, to share this. It's been so beautiful opening up. <laughs> and sharing what's inside here, and, and I'm just feeling relatable. I've been Will Crawford. Thank you. Good night. Love you all.